Should we do a bit of Darwin Nunes chat? Feels like we've got to do some Darwin Nunes yeah, I think chat. We do have to, don't we? Yeah. He's, he's a massive talking point again, and as he always is. And, you know, I just remember sitting here maybe a month ago now, getting really angry about it and, and stuff like that. And, you know, done deep dives uh, with Josh Williams talking about him. And one of the things that Josh said that's probably stuck with me and, and has helped to sort of uh, smooth the edges of, of my sort of opinion on Darwin of late is. You know, he puts a lot of stock into getting into the right positions and um, you can see that he does consistently do that. But I keep falling down on the fact that, like, how long can he really go on at the centre forward without putting the ball in the back of the net when the chances are there? Because I think Liverpool have got the players where they can put other players into the number nine and, and they'll stick the chances away. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you support and you hope that he's able to turn it around because if it does click... My words, he's he, he's got the potential to be completely unstoppable, yeah. but you question whether it is going to click for him at the moment, don't you? I mean, the offside one for the Dislau goal was so close, but he doesn't need to be that close. He's miles away from Ben, miles away from. The, there's no advantage for him being a, a foot offside. He could have been two foot onside and still got to the ball in time but it's a good run and it's a great ball by I think it was Curtis Jones for that one outside of the boot absolutely superb timing from from Kurt Jones I don't think he could have done any better um, but in terms of you know we missed five big chances last night in last night's game of our nine big chances that we created Darwin Nunes misses three of them there's one that bounces these misses or saves though I, mean, um, I know they count as the same statistically score. Yeah. Um, so the first well one of them is off the knee mm-hmm. isn't it um which I, que- back, I question whether he could have done any more than that yeah. on that on that one. To be honest with you, there's the one on one, isn't there? Uh, which is the which is which the is the one. one, and the other one. I'm actually not sure which one it is. is it it's probably, I I wouldn't have said that was a big chance to be honest, but I think it must have been the head. Right the first the half where he got he has another good like shot oh, yeah. across the keeper. Would you no, say Salah, to save? Salah put it in like does a one to one shot on. The one he dummies. No, no, no. He has another shot Salah in the first puts, half inside the 18 yard box. He's literally on at the keeper. He's just got to put it past him. Is that um, the one where it comes off his knee, though? I think no, that's the that's one. The se- fr- is that the second half in the country? I thought the second half was the one, one fa- you're going on about. Yeah, yeah that, the one he hits, the, it's, it hits his knee and it's the Bravka, like close range. The mm. second half, there's another one in the first yeah. half where he goes. It's before, I think it's he, before the one on one. Salah does like a reverse pass. And he has a shot. Yeah. Sort of across oh, the yeah, that, that will be it, actually, wouldn't it? Because it was actually Darwin who played the ball to Mo. It was a poor Salah. ball because yeah. it was behind Salah. Yeah. Salah somehow gets yeah. the ball out. And <coughs> again, I, I question whether he could have done any better. Yeah. The commentators on the replays were saying, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a poor shot. But I'll be honest, I, 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 thought he's, I thought it was a brilliant saving a good shot and he's had the header as well which I thought was a really tough header the one where he probably connects best is the sort of half volley from tight range where that's the coming in on the right hand coming side. in from the right hand side so even just talking those through the one on one's the only one that I've got a major issue with there because that's one of them where it's that Salah Salah just slots it and you know or if it's shot he goes around and gets a pen I think it's all Paul Tom can describe it as it's a, it's a lack of I'm paraphrasing, but like finesse in his yeah. choice of finishes, like he doesn't have, he doesn't have a range of strikes. Like look at look at Isaac's goal as an example of that. Yeah. Like he well, just runs what, through. That's and what he annoyed lifts, me most yeah, about Darwin's miss is that Isaac scores one that's dead similar yeah. Yeah. and makes it look really easy. And you sort of think, how oh, many would he get up top for us? Yeah, and that was my first thought when he when he put the ball in the back of the net. My my thoughts on the Darwin thing. The answer's twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is this is the thing. Because I had a look, I look at like how many goals City players had scored, and how many players, or goals Arsenal players had scored. Now Carragher did a big thing on on a pre-match, I think, about like the lack of goals from Arsenal. I mean, Salah forwards. scored more than Arsenal's forwards, hasn't he? Um, and I was a bit taken aback by how few goals actually are. They just, they just don't have a headline goal scorer. Is the, is the difference between them uh, us and City? But like in terms of the overall output, Liverpool and City are pretty much matched. Liverpool have got more goal scorers, but I think their second top goal scorer in the league's got six and ours has got we've got two on five um, and, I, and I, the thing about Darwin is when I'm quite calm about it is whilst you've got Salah and bear in mind I'm well aware what this leads into I know AFCON will talk about it you don't no one else has got two 15 goal forwards and I think Darwin Nunes is a bit better finishing he's not far off being that to the types of chances he's getting and, and what have you so I'm quite calm about it because I think if he learns how to finish those chances we're fucking unbelievable but 
but given that nobody else has that, I don't know whether we're, we're, but we're nobody else too ha- much. Ha- nobody else has that. I take the, take the point, right? But Liverpool had Mane and, and mm. Salah doing it. You know, Liverpool should probably have at least five or six, seven, eight, nine more goals this season and we'd be comfortably the top scorers in the league. Yeah. And it's not the games that you win for too where you feel the misses. It's the games that you draw nil-nil yeah. um, that you look back on and you rue those misses. And yeah. and that's where a striker can really make his, his name for himself, isn't it? Because not only is he putting the ball in the back of the net, but he's putting points on the on the board as well. Yeah. And that's, you know, the, the, the big thing this season, we're, we're lucky in that everybody's having a little bit of a struggle in sort of season at the top but those six draws could have been three draws yeah. had we finished our dinner in those games and we'd be walking this league it's unfortunate that we're not of course he's a big part in the team performance but I do think that somebody else at up top for Liverpool right now and we'd be miles ahead of everyone else yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, well, I can't it, well it's like that but it's, it's like that yeah it's Jota might be the man I think in that situation is that is the point you know if, if Jota's fit he's anything he's our third top goal scorer he'd probably be on double figures I'd guess by mm-hmm. now so I, I, that's what I mean I get that I totally get it I do I, I, I can't disagree that he needs to take more of his chances but I look at it as a as a set and I'm not it doesn't dishearten me too much I guess is the, is, is the kind of point I'm making on it if at some point it clicks for him, as I say, we're going to be un- unstoppable. No one's, nobody's going to stop us running away with absolutely everything. But this is the difference between buying the best and buying the ready-made, and it's a difference between Erling Haaland and Darwin Nunes. What will be interesting to see, Chloe, is what happens in the coming week. Because it does feel like Darwin is... He just he seems to just like passing the ball to other people. I know he's having his chances and he's still getting loads of shots, but like there was three opportunities in that game where he just turned and squared it to someone when Fernando Torres just slots it or Suarez just slots it or pick a, pick a tradition, Erling Haaland just slots it. Yeah, the the thing I'd say about Darwin Nunes is just nothing looks easy for the lad. Like, it just looks like it's a bit all over the place. Um, his first touch when he's in behind it just hasn't been good enough. And I think it's United, the one where he's threw in and, and I think Luis Diaz or one of them try and shoot and it goes out for a corner. But his touch, he's in a great position, but it comes off his knee and it goes in a different direction. And nothing looks simple. Um and like you mentioned there, I think if it clicked for him, he'd be unbelievable and he could be unstoppable. But I'm getting very, very bored of him missing massive chances because it's the massive chances, like you said there, where you need someone who's calm and level-headed to just have the composure to put it in the back of the net. We're now going to be without Salah. Um, and Salah was horrific in that first half of footy. But in that second half, he turned it on because he knew he could. He, he went to a new level. He, yeah. Yeah, that was also yeah. a thing. Uh, he motivated himself. He had a word with himself at half time and came out a totally different footballer. And he can go into that gear. I mean, the outside the football mm, for Cody Apu's outrageous. Yeah. Outrageous. Um, and I, I think that's the, the, the thing with Darwin Nunes is he's our number nine. He's the one that we paid millions and millions and millions for. And I think if it does click, he'll be sensational because a look at the chances he's getting now. If he manages to actually bury them, can you imagine how far we'd be blasting these teams away? Mm. The problem is, is that the likes of Luton away and yeah, Arsenal one. and obviously Man United in those big games where there's not a lot in it and you and that one chance on that main chance falls to your number nine. I want it to be Diego Jota. Yeah. I don't want it to be Darwin Nunes right now. It was interesting um, to put that we put Darwin. Um, yeah, we put. Diogo through the middle actually yeah. I thought was was telling was telling for that really Dan yeah. he links to play really well Jota though doesn't he, he does, Dan? Yeah. and I, he's a killer isn't he ultimately as yeah. well when it boils down to it I just get I get this season some Hesky vibes well you know from in Darwin that, yeah from Darwin I do you know and, and completely different actually style but what I mean is but Hesky would lay, lay it on to Owen is that what you're talking well, about that, Darwin does it, that well, it was a great assist because people fair. talk about number nine and when they're assist. not finishing like again Erling Haaland doesn't, if he doesn't score what else does he do not mm-hmm. and you know he's not he doesn't yeah. get assists Darwin I think is doing his best to keep himself in the team because he's still getting output yeah. I think he's still our I think goals and assists combined he's second highest for us this yeah. season after Salah sorry but 
it goes back to that f- the finesse thing in front of goal. He just doesn't have that range of finishing. And Emil Heskey had one season where he, where he realised he could like dink the keeper and he scored a million goals and scored in every comp- every competition going for us and all that kind of stuff. There's just a little bit of that for him. But this is the thing. He's not scoring the chances, but also he's he's making loads for Mo Salah. Yeah, yeah. And there's a thing. Does, does Salah have as many goals if we put Cody Gappo in the nine? Mm. Might, maybe. But I also don't know that. And uh, what else he's doing really well? He, he come on leaps and bounds since he first arrived at the club. But the biggest issue around this whole conversation for me is the fact that I think we've all, in different guises now, said if it clicks for him. We've been saying that pretty much since he arrived at the football mm. club. So that's a sort of minor issue to one side. But what he is doing really well is his performance all around has improved a lot because yeah. I felt at times last season, if he wasn't scoring the big chances, which he never really has since he arrived, this has always been an ongoing theme now during his Liverpool career, he wasn't really contributing to the team full stop. But you're right, his assists are really good his passing is really good his link up play with those around him is really good but also and I think it's kind of you mentioned Emil Heskey I spoke to him last week about this very topic and he kind of alluded to it he said when you're Liverpool's number nine or when you're playing as an attacker for Liverpool you've got to be the first defender and that's even more true now in a Jurgen Klopp side you've got to do all that pressing stuff and he's doing that really really well so Jurgen Klopp once again last night was at pains to stress just how pivotal he remains to the side now ultimately there's an undercurrent in all of this about yeah, but what about when he's one on one with a keeper? But what he is doing really well is he's playing really well. He's just not finishing these big, big chances that we're talking about. So, how long can you go on with that being the case is the major question here. Now, I've got a little bit of sort of credit in the bank with him still. Right mm-hmm. now, I'm not sort of pulling the trigger on him saying, right, it needs to be Jota, it needs to be Gakpo, whatever. But and it definitely comes down to a situation whereby when you are playing these big games, and these games are just going to get bigger and bigger because we're getting towards the business end, looks like we're in a title race. <laughs> At what point do you have to say, right, Darwin, sorry, mate, I know you're doing this stuff really well, but you've got to be putting the ball in the back. Well, as it? long as Liverpool are winning games of football, it won't no. matter to you, and I don't think, will it? No. The the thing I was going to mention is, I read a stat earlier, He has he's averaging a goal slash assist every 96 sort of minutes which is really really good um, and his, his vision and his, his pass for Mo for the first is, is really really good his touch for I don't know what goal it is where Sobo runs onto it in fact it's that go- it's that goal is it not um, the link up the one when he gets it yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then obviously Diaz runs with it passes it to, to Nunes and he does the pass across the box he's, he's influencing games and look at the overall like you said his play is really good but the problem is is being the vocal number nine the chances come to you you're the main one who they come to he's now those assists he's assisted Salah the most well you're not going to have Salah there now well, this is it's going to be someone else well this is the interesting point and where, where the next month represents an interesting challenge for him because I do think he's trying too hard to play other people in because mm-hmm. when it's not going well you want to feel like you, you're contributing to Liverpool's attack somehow and, and, and he is mm-hmm. Let, let's make, let's make, he's, got, he's got more assists than goals in the Premier League this season which for a our number nine is mad, you know. It's it's really, but I think that's what's keeping him in the team. Whereas Salah's not going to be there, so maybe there's a little bit of like maybe just take it yourself. You know, have a bit of freedom. Don't you don't have to think about what your what everyone else is going to be doing around you. Your responsibility is to stick the ball in the back of that. Maybe more people are looking to get the ball to him rather than Salah still mm-hmm. be the ultimate focal point. Don't know, but that's I'd be more encouraged about that if he'd been doing a bit more of that going into it, but. It's, it's a great problem to, to have when you're sat clear at the top of the league. <laughs> it's a better problem to have there than, you know, last yeah. season. Question where marks we over your number nine. Fifth and sixth, yeah. isn't yeah. it? 100%. Have you noticed a, a change of opinion at all inside the ground? Because, again, this is a point Hesky yeah. made to me. is like fans, certain Liverpool fans, will stick by you if you're putting the work in, if you're closing people down, etc., etc. They'll give you that free pass a little bit if you want, as long as I you're doing all that stuff. He, I don't think he's getting... The, like the new, the blind Nunes yeah, chanting as not. much anymore. Still there, a little bit but of it's not as like he's it's not so as cult anymore. It's a bit like what Chris was saying. You know, you come out at the start of December saying like, I just I, I'll let's just chant when he scores rather than chant when he misses and see if that helps him score a few <laughs> more goals. It does feel like there's a little bit of that, but yeah. still those moments where he's busting a gut mm. and it's it's a great save or it's all you know he's still getting the support because we're Liverpool fans. Yeah, That's course, how we yeah. treat our own. Um, but I I, I think. You, 
I think that it's changing slightly so much as people no, actually, mate, Yeah, exactly. No, go and go and go and be good. Yeah. Go and be good, and then we'll we'll talk about it after. Yeah. You know? like he, yeah. There was a, a, there was a part where he tracks all the way back and he makes a, a brilliant tackle, and like then everyone starts mm. chanting Nunes. But the one where he's one v one and he misses and. Months ago, after he'd missed it, we'd be chanting in. And this time, yeah. everyone is uh, literally fuming at the last. All those conversations going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. It's not quite the same as it was a couple of months ago. Um, but you, we still have supported him. And, and when he goes off, he gets a standing ovation. You know, we know how much work he's put into the game. But you're seeing it more in the moments when he misses big chances because there's now more pressure on us. We're all expect. We never expected to be in this position, but now we're here, and now the expectations of Liverpool fans are moving with it, which therefore means it feels like life or death yeah. <laughs> in these no, games. Right. So when you miss a big chance inside the stadium, we're more likely to be. You're less forgiving, aren't you? You're less forgiving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah.